distinctive features and articulatory gestures in Hadza. This presentation concerns Hadza, a Khoisan language that has non pulmonic consonants, clicks, and ejectives in its phonetic phonological uh, inventory. A precise articulatory and acoustic description is necessary to characterize and formalize these consonants in terms of articulatory gestures and distinctive features. The challenge is to understand the mechanism of the production of these segments and to understand how this type of data assesses or extends the limits of our knowledge on the diversity and functioning of speech production in languages. Previous works done on Hadza were done by Sands, Madison, and Lade Fogut. Sands uh, would describe Hadza with nine clicks, while uh, Kirk Miller uh, suggests that there are 12. Recent data show that the language has, in fact, 13 uh, clicks that are displayed here. Clicks have four types and various accompaniments that, can, that will be displayed a little bit later in this presentation. presentation. The four types of Hatsa clicks, bilabial, dental, alveolar, and lateral, can be accompanied in a contrastive way by aspirated, glottal, and nasal features that can sometimes be combined. The speakers and the corpus used for this study uh, was done with five male and four female native speakers. Words including all Hatsa consonants were recorded, and each word was repeated three times. The method that we've been using for this study uh, was done by using uh, an EVA2 workstation that can record simultaneously sound, airflow, intraoral pressure, and electroglottography as displayed on the right screen that you have here, where in the order you have the audio waveform, the oral airflow, the intraoral pressure, and the EDG uh, waveform. And you have the position of the speaker, of one of the female speakers of our study here, uh, with the different uh, parameters that were under study. About the methods, uh, we also use video images that were recorded of speakers at normal speed and at, at 300, 300 frames per second. A mirror was set at an angle of about 45 degrees from the face to obtain profile positions and movements of the lips, both at normal speed and at 300 frames per second. Sound was recorded at the same time to make an acoustic analysis of the words produced. The objective of the study uh, are to describe Hadza clicks in terms of gestures with a measure of time and distinctive features, uh, check and establish the accompaniments of the different clicks, and also we want to uh, uh, understand the similarities and the differences with the clicks of the certain question languages. Another question is, are there aspirated clicks in Hadza? And finally, we want to evaluate the acoustic similarity between clicks and ejectives. A click can just be described as a series of features or a superposition of gestures, for example, nasal, lateral, and aspirated, as it is displayed here for the lateral click. From an acoustic point of view, clicks can be described with two features, grave and acute, grave or acute, and abrupt or noisy, following a, a proposal made by uh, Tony Trail in 1994. So for example, the dental and alveolar clicks in Hadza are grave and noisy. The dental uh, or abrupt uh, um, uh, for the, the alveolar click, the lateral click uh, is grave and acute. This description is deduced from an examination of the acoustic spectra taken at the clicks release. Clicks are consonants that have a unique source, namely a, su a suction caused by a filaric airflow. The results can be a type of impulse source and or noise of a certain duration. These parameters are filtered by the shapes of the oral cavity, which are associated with each click. The acoustic signatures encode the dimensions of the vocal tract as for the consonants where the acoustic signature particularly encodes those which are in front of the constriction. In the case of some clicks, it is the cavity posterior to the constriction that is excited, as we will see later in the presentation. Clicks have acoustically two components, 
an attack transient that you can see on the red arrow here and an extinction transient that is display, displayed by the blue arrow. The attack transient is the explosion noise that is sometimes called a burst, which is the impulse response to a change in the shape of the vocal tract. The, extension, the, extinction, the ex, extinction transient is the noise associated with the turbulent release. And we have here uh, the waveform shape at the release of the Hadzak Higgs. And you can see that it is very easy to distinguish what you have, the bilabial click here, the dental click here, the alveolar click here, and you have the lateral click displayed on the right here. The role of the posterior cavity, uh, we can say the following things. The rising resonance, the partial, if you want, between one and two uh, kilohertz, following the posterior re release results from the lowering of the back of the tongue and the reduction in the volume of the pharyngeal cavity. So you have three representation here, one uh, you, uh, with a dental click, one with an alveolar click, and one with a lateral click. With the dental, the dental click, you have a dental, nasal, and glottal, cl uh, glottal click uh, component. And you can see here that you have a typical signature of the audio waveform of the dental click, but you have, in this case, an open velum and a closed glottis that results in a slight frication noise after the release. For the alveolar glottal click that you have here, you have the velum and the glottis closed, and this gives a damped colored noise. The colored noise is used, the term used by people working on music acoustics to show that you have some kinds of, uh, you have uh, some representation of additional noise uh, accompanying the, the birth that you have here. And then you also have the lateral click that is nasal and glottal, and you have here a noise band that characterizes the uh, lateral click. And in this case, you also have an open velum and a closed glottis that results in this case, again, in a slight frication noise. Three types of accompaniment for these clicks, laryngeal activity that you have here, the oral nasal process, voiced or voiceless nasals, place and manner of the back release that can be vela or uvula, and it is displayed on this uh, representation here. So one important thing that we have to understand with clicks that you have simultaneity of gestures that results in little co-articulation. The anterior articulators, apex and tongue blade, move at different speed with the clicks. There is a difference between the apical clicks, the dental and the alveolar and the lateral click, where the tongue blade extends backwards during the production uh, before the release. This movement of the back of the tongue is slower for aspirated clicks compared to non-aspirated ones. For noisy clicks, after releasing the anterior closure, there is an, uh, an initial increase in loudness, which increases to a peak and then decreases. It is a measure of how quickly the anterior part of the tongue moves away from its place of articulation. So here you have a display, a display of a few examples of the four clicks that we have uh, in Hatsa. You have one example of bilabial click that is uh, nas nas nasalized here. You have four examples of the dental click with glottal aspirated nasal and glottal nasal. The same for uh, alveolar click, where you have a simple glottal click, you have a nasal, an aspirated, and a glottal. And in the case of the lateral click, you have the same kind of display in the four words that are presented here, and that I will illustrate right now with uh, spectrograms and displaying the other waveform. Just before that, I want to show the realization of a bilabial click in real time, in, in normal speed, if you want. Kumshukuru Mungu. So this now you have the same person producing the clicks at 300 frames per second, and you will see very clearly the 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 compression of the tulips and the backward movement that uh, results in the uh, suction uh, that is producing the suction.
backward movement of the tulips that uh, accounts for the uh, suction. So with the bilabial click, uh, here is the example again. Mwah. It's produced by a man. And we have here the typical noise uh, of the of the bilabial click. And sometimes you even have a kind of whistling noise that is represented when it, when the compression between the two lips is not complete. So what you what you have here is a complete closure of the lips. And here you have an incomplete closure on the lips of the lips just before the final compression that results in the noise that you have at the end uh, of the signal here. So here are four examples of the dental click. Here is the first example. Oh. Oh. Here is a, a, an example of asp dental aspirated. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. With two in the same word. Nasal glottal. And here you have uh, the nasal, na dental nasal. Nata. Nata. So one represent interesting representation of this is to, uh, you have twice the audio waveform in green here for the following word. And what you have here is three representation of the dental click. And the, the third one is aspirated. And what is interesting is that you can see that there is um, a negative oral airflow at the end of the click. And you also see that there is a, a, a downward movement of the, of the HD waveform that's accounting for this uh, aspiration that you have at the end of the click. So here are four examples of the aspirated click, the, the alveolar click, I'm sorry. Lacco, lacco. Alveolar. Taco, taco. And here's the glottal uh, alveolar. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And here is a, a representation of alveolar nasal. Conlana, conlana. And finally, uh, I will represent the give four examples of the lateral click. Topi, topi. Here is the aspirated. Ah, ah. Here is the glottal nasal. Ben -e. Ben -e. And here is the nasal aspirated. Ah, ah. So you can see that the different accompaniment can combine to make quite complex realization of the clicks. And also that the aspiration is pretty obvious at the end of some clicks. It's not always ob as, as obvious that this is represented here, but there is no doubt that there, that there are aspirated clicks in Hatsa from the following examples. And so you have, as was displayed before, you have uh, audio waveform twice in green, you have intraoral pressure, oral airflow, and here you have EGG and the oral airflow. And you can see again that the aspiration that is characterized by the silence that you have on the audio waveform here is represented by a negative oral airflow. And there is a downward movement uh, of the EGG signal that accounts probably for the opening uh, gesture of the uh, vocal force. Here is the example. <coughs> and the, the, the damp noise comes from the fact that the speaker is, is speaking with the mask on his face. So to sum up all this, for we can do two description, one articulatory description for the labial, um, dental, alveolar, and lateral clicks, where you have labial, uh, laminal dental for the uh, what's called the dental click. We have rather apical alveolar for the uh, for the alveolar click, and you have a lateral here, uh, which is uh, realized laterally. And so the, acoustically, we can characterize that using the four um, parameters that was proposed that were proposed by Tony Trail. The alveolar click is grave uh, and uh, abrupt. The dental click is grave and noisy, and the lateral click is uh, acute uh, and abrupt. There is a difference between these the, the 
Hatzaklik and the Southern Croatian languages, as we will discuss a little bit later in the presentation. So how do we establish that? We establish that by making FFT spectrum of the noise at the release. And you can clearly see that the four types of clicks that we have in Hatza, you have for the alveolar, a grave, uh, what we call grave and abrupt. Uh, so the, the grave is characterized by the peak in the lower frequencies rather between 1000 and 200 Hertz. It's above 2000 Hertz and uh, between 2000 and 3000 Hertz for the lateral click that is acute and abrupt. And you have for the bilabial, it is a grave and noisy. We can have a continuous noise that you have here and you don't really have a real peak uh, in the case of this click. And the dental click has a peak between 1000 and 2000 Hertz and it is grave and noisy. So the back of the tongue moves away more slowly from the velum with the aspirated clicks compared to the non-aspirated ones. Futures interpretation has to integrate this time factor. And that was that's what we were seeing on the spectrograms where there were more time for the uh, uh, aspirated clicks that were uh, nasalized or nasal if you want compared to the, the non-nasal uh, character that we were displayed that were displayed before. All the segments discussed require to account very precisely for the relative coordination of articulatory movements, the adjustments of the larynx and the movements of the velum which control nasal flow. And these coordination specifications are not directly related one to one with the phonological features. This observation was already made some time ago by Peter Ladefoget and, and Tony Trail for complex. And I think it's still the, the, it, it is the same case here for Hatsa, and it is really a real challenge uh, for the interface or for the relation between phonetics and phonology to solve this kind of problem. And Hatsa, as uh, many other uh, Quezon languages or languages displaying clicks, if you if you want, uh, uh, present a real challenge for the relation between phonetics and phonological representations. So links between clicks and adjectives. The lateral click has a similar articulation to that of the lateral ejective, that is an affricated ej lateral ejective in Hatsa. And this affricated lateral ejective of Hatsa is a variant of uh, the same sound that you have in Iraqu. In Hatsa, you have a voiceless character at the end, which is not the case for Iraqu. And one observation that was done some time ago already, and again by Tony Trail, is that the glottal dental click that you have in some southern uh, Khoisan languages uh, is uh, when it's weakened becomes an alveolar, uh, uh, an alveolar affricated uh, ejective and the click has velaric in initiation swallowing type of movement as you know and the ejective could be the return movement that is produced with the glottal initiation so there is a there seem to be at least for historical reasons, uh, 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 a nice relation between the dental, the glottal dental, and the affricated ejective that we have to understand a little bit better in the in future studies. So here is an example of a word of a Hadza word representing one word where you have the lateral click in nasal and glottal with nasal and glottal accompaniments. And you have the affricated uh, ejective here. Here is the word. And you can see clearly on the audio waveform that there is a pretty similar uh, acoustic signature. We, we find again this noise band uh, that we have that is very typical for the lateral click uh, in uh, Hadza. And in this case, you have a slow damping movement that is pretty similar to what we found for the affricated ejective that we have here. So to be explored in the future is the similarity between the Iraqu ejective, affricated lateral ejective and the Hatsa one due to borrowing or to a similar mechanism. I think this is a very interesting question for historical reason or to understand better the linguistic context that could have happened between the two languages. How to explain the difference between the dental and the lateral clicks of Southern Khoisan and, and Hatsa 
The lateral could be a lateralized version of the palatal peak that we found in the third question languages when it, when it is present. And so we could have this, this kind of sound change. And in this case, that would explain uh, why we have this difference uh, in uh, terms of acoustic features between the lateral click uh, in Southern Quezon and in Hatsa. But that has to be explored a, bit, a little bit more detail in the future. So to conclude, I wish to continue uh, to recommend, as what started uh, some time ago by uh, Anthony Trail, Peter Ladefogut, and Ian Madison, that the synchronized combination of physiological parameters recorded with, in all cases, the EVA device allows to obtain quantified, uh, quantified fine phonetic details. And the method should be used to compare phonetic details in many languages. So what we are in need is to have a kind of unified method to quantify very, to quantify very precisely the physiological parameters that we study in these languages. And the question that I was raising before about the relation between phonetic details and phonological future could probably have uh, an answer if we uh, allow ourselves to have the best possible tools to describe these languages in the future. Thank you very much for attention.